The blood washed away, but the guilt never does. Welcome to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring psychotherapist and author Siobhan Scott. Richard Allen, the man accused of being the Delphi murderer, will be seeing his day in court shortly. A uh, hearing recently uh, held to uh, discuss uh, several motions uh, in the case. And as of right now, they're all up in the air. The judge is saying, I will take all of this under advisement. Uh, so we'll see what those are going to be. But one of the biggest things is uh, the defense uh, wanting to get all 60 confessions of Richard Allen removed from the actual trial. So the jury doesn't hear that. Now, keep in mind, these 60 confessions were in a time where he was in solitary confinement, where he may say, I killed them, and then in the same sentence, literally eat a piece of his own poop. Um, that's what was happening uh, in, in that uh, case. So how legit are these confessions? How strong can they be in court, especially with that number of them? Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author, joining us uh, to discuss Let's just get onto that right away. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of confessions in a 22 month period in solitary confinement. Uh, do they have any weight? It's it's what a mess this case is really. Um, psychotic people have made false confessions, and you know when you're psychotic. You have lost contact with reality. You don't know what reality is, and you can be coerced and intimidated. Certainly, psychotic people don't know what happened. So they may just have these fanciful stories coming into their mind. They may be hearing voices that are telling them they did things that they didn't do. Some of these stories that, you know, the voices tell them are completely bizarre and strange. Um, but, you know, this is such a confusing case. There are there were so many bizarre things about the staging of the murder scene. It did strike me as this is likely a psychotic perpetrator. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just weird. That's all the various things about it. Um, so is it possible that Richard Allen did this? Sure. Is it possible he didn't? Sure. And we're just going to have to look at all the evidence and what else the state may have that we don't know about at this point. I mean, what does solitary confinement to this level do to someone? I mean, especially someone who has no criminal record, has no history of, of violent crimes or really anything for that matter, working at the CVS and suddenly you know, he raises his hand and says, hey, I was over there. How can I help? And now he's suspect number one and he's accused of the crime. And now guess what? 22 months in a box. You get one hour out a day. Uh, that's got to, you know, severely mess with someone. I think mess is, is not even an applicable term for something like that. It's it's a really fascinating question, and solitary confinement is definitely a stressor on people. But if you don't have pre-existing tendencies towards psychosis or some kind of mental instability, you're not going to deteriorate to the point where you're eating feces or smearing feces or any of these kinds of bizarre things. I think if you or I were in psych um, solitary confinement, we would definitely get depressed. We would get anxious. We might be having panic attacks. That would be in the normal range. Mm -hmm. But this kind of gross psychosis indicates to me this is a person who had some pre-existing vulnerabilities. Um, was there a tendency towards psychotic thinking that perhaps had just never really manifested? Or maybe it had and we just don't know about it, mm -hmm. you know? So I have many, many questions about this case. It's really been an interesting one, and I'm looking forward to hearing more. We just don't have the whole story yet. You know, we're not, we haven't really heard anything from anyone coming out out and saying, oh, God, Richard Allen, yeah, he was, you know, he was nuts. You know, it, all we've heard is, like, he was a normal guy. Uh, and obviously what goes on behind closed doors goes on behind closed doors, but wouldn't there be kind of a character arc here or something uh, that would show that this man was not healthy if, in fact, you know, he was capable of doing these sort of things? Uh, we're, we're just, we're not seeing that, that we've seen in other, like, Koberger, we have people coming out going, yeah, really a lot of issues with women, all of that. Nothing on Richard Allen other than he's a nice guy. 
Yeah, it's it's really hard to say. You know, if I were looking at being a, an investigator who was trying to gather information, I would do in-depth interviews with the people closest to him. And I don't know that we've seen in-depth interviews mm-hmm. with the people closest to him. It's certainly not been televised. Mm-hmm. So we just don't really know. There are people who have psychotic tendencies who maybe had a, a break when they were 18 or 20, and then they got on some meds and they lived, you know, another decade or two and had no symptoms. But yet a person like that, I, I know some people like that, you know, that had a young break and mm-hmm. then got stabilized. And then at 40 or 50, had another break and had a severe break. And so we just we just don't know. You know, mm-hmm. I, I can't say I lean one way or the other on this sure. case, because to me, looking at it clinically, there's just a lot of weird stuff and and we don't have the whole story. And then you throw in the, you know, the Odinist cult bizarre. This is really one that's just got strange, strange thing after another. All right. True crime addicts. Let's cut the crap. You're knee deep in the gory details of your favorite podcast when suddenly a commercial hits like a bad meal. Seriously? You deserve better. Upgrade to True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, where you can binge without those annoying ads. Plus, get extended interviews that go deeper into the darkness and early access to episodes so you can be the first to know. It's like trading up from fast food to fine dining, but with more blood. So, go ahead. Search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and feast on the good stuff.